What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn about the simplest and easiest way to deploy open source models onto GPU servers, which is Hugging Face Inference Endpoints. So let us get right into it. All right, so this is going to be quite straightforward and simple. The goal is to deploy an open source model to a GPU server and you don't have your own GPU, so you have to pay for it. Obviously, this is not going to be free. And the simplest way to do that, in my opinion, is to use Hugging Face Inference Endpoints. All you have to do here is you have to choose a model, be it an image generation model, a text generation model, a classification model, a vision model, whatever. You choose a model, you choose the hardware, and then you connect a payment method and you just have your open source model running. You can easily use it using Python. We're going to see how to do that in this video as well. And all you have to do for that is you have to go to the inference endpoints page of Hugging Face. You will find a link to it in the description down below. Then you click on this deploy your first model button. Of course, you have to have an account. You need to create an account. If you don't have one, you have to connect a payment method, a credit card or something. And then all you have to do is you have to choose a model either uh, by filtering here with the categories and with the price or by just typing it. For example, I can go with Phi from Microsoft. Uh, three mini, for example, I can go with this one. And then I can choose here a platform, I can go with AWS, I can go with Azure, if the model is supported, I can go with Google Cloud. And important for those of you now who maybe have a startup in the EU, you maybe for compliance reasons, uh, want to go with the EU location here. Keep in mind, not everything is available, not everything is compatible. And also not everything has enough resources. So I'm not sure if we're going to find an example but sometimes it says here low memory. If you need more memory than the GPU has, it says low memory. In this case, now I don't find something like this, uh, but you just choose a server that works. For example, this one here has one GPU in Nvidia L4 with 24 gigabytes of VRAM and it costs 80 cents per hour. Now, of course, what you can do is you can do automatic scaling to zero. So if the server is idle for long enough, it's going to just scale to zero, it's going to shut down essentially or pause, uh, which means that you don't have to pay any money. And then you have some cold start time when you ping it again. So it boots up, and then it uh, charges money again. But yeah, just choose any model, you can also by the way, go to this button here and say deploy from hugging face, and then you can uh, show or you can point to the repository, import the model and then use that if you want to. But I'm just going to go with a simple Microsoft uh, Phi 3 mini. 120k instruct model, you can name it whatever you want. And then you can just click on let's go here in my case, uh, to actually I can go with the US uh, server here as well it doesn't really matter for the video. I'm going to go with this Nvidia L4, uh, one GPU 24 gigabytes, I'm going to create the endpoint, I already have a payment method connected. And now you can see what's happening here is it's being initialized. So I'm just waiting now. And once this is done, I'm going to see an endpoint that I can call. I can also configure some stuff. I can also see some code samples. I can look at analytics. So how often is this model being used? I can look at the logs and I can also see how much I already paid for it. Uh, it is paid per hour, not per token use. So even if you spam the model all the time, you're not going to pay more. You're paying for the model being active, not for the model being used. Now, while this is booting up, while this is initializing, what you want to do is you want to go to your account. You want to go to manage access tokens and you want to, uh, yeah, of course, confirm your identity, log in with your password. Actually, I think this is now the wrong password. So let me type the other one. And then what you do is you create a new token. What you want to do here is you can either just allow for everything, but I like to follow the least privilege principle. So the only thing that I really need for this token here is to make calls to the inference endpoint. So you want to check this box here. You want to name it whatever you want. And then you just want to create the token and then copy paste it into a file. So I already have done that I'm going to use one of these tokens here. Uh, I think I'm using this one at the moment. Um, and how we use it is we go to a directory where we want to have our project. So I'm going to go to my current working directory. And in here, I have a file called dot env. Now you can also create one, I'm going to now say dot env uh, test. So imagine this is my dot n file, what I have in this file is I have hf underscore token is equal to whatever the token is. So whatever you copy pasted or whatever you copied, you pasted here uh, as the hf token hugging face token. 
And uh, once you have that, you can just save that. Don't save it as .env.test, save it as .env. So you have the same file that I have, and that is what we're going to use in Python. Now, in addition to that, we're going to also need some packages installed. You can, if you want to, if you're old school, you can use pip, so pip or pip3 install, and then all the packages. So in this case, what we're going to use is we're going to use Pydantic uh, for a structured output example that I'm going to show you. We're going to use uh, Hugging Face Hub, so Hugging, Hugging Face Hub, like this, and we're going to use Langchain, uh, I think it's dash OpenAI, Maybe it's also underscore open I'm not sure. And we're going to use Python dash dot env. These are the packages that I'm going to install here. However, I'm going to use UV. This is what you use nowadays. If you are a professional coder, it's just much faster. It's a rust based uh, package manager. I have a video on it if you want to check it out. But basically, I'm going to just say UV init current directory. And then I'm going to say UV add in the same packages. So I'm going to use, by the way, if you want to use UV, you just have to say pip three install. Uh, UV, I think, I think you can also install it with cargo. And then we say UV at or pip install, whatever, again, Pydantic, uh, Langchain, open AI, hugging face hub, and Python dot env. So all of this is now installed. And now we can go to the main file, main.py. And conveniently at the same time, my endpoint is now running. So you can see it's running. This is my endpoint URL. This is how I use the model. And I can only access the model if I have the API key. So if I have the token, uh, the access token. Well, but what I can see here is I can play around with it here already. So I can say hello. And it will hopefully answer. There you go. That is my model running in the cloud now. Um, I can look at the analytics, you can see there was a request, I can also go to the logs and I can see what's happening here. Um, I can go to usage and cost and you can see I already spent five cents on this because yeah, it needed some time to boot up. And that's basically it. I can of course also increase now the hardware. This is important here, I can do auto scaling. So if I want to deploy this to an actual application, and I want to have multiple instances in case the workload um, explode. So I have maybe thousands of customers. So then I want to be able to scale that to multiple instances automatically without having to worry about this. So in this case, the moment I exceed 80% of the uh, hardware utilization, it would scale to additional uh, replicas. So I would have multiple instances of the same model running um, if I have 80% usage so that I never run out of capacity, so to say. Um, and what you can also do here is force scale to zero. So I can scale this endpoint to zero, which means that I can cause it to shut down, but not really because it's going to boot up if I uh, send a request. It's not the same as pause. Pause would need to be restarted. Uh, scale to zero means uh, be idle unless I send a request. Um, and also, I think, yeah, automatic scale to zero here. You can also say, uh, it should scale to zero if nothing happens for 15 minutes, if nothing happens for an hour, or never scale to zero, always keep it running, whatever you want for your application. All right, so let us move on now and try to connect to this. What we're going to do is, let me just zoom in a little bit, we're going to say import OS, we're going to say um, import, or actually from dot env import load dot env, this is going to load our API key or access token. Uh, from Pydantic, or actually let's start without Pydantic first. Let's just go with an ordinary request. Let's say from Langchain underscore open AI import chat open AI. By the way, you can also use this. I'm not sure if it has, I think it also has here an example. You can also just easily go to Python and copy paste that. So you can copy paste the sample here and it's going to work as well. So you can just take this copy paste and use it. Then you can turn off the tutorial. Uh, and you can just do it like this. But we're going to use it with Langchain so that we can also achieve structured output, which is common for uh, SaaS and business use cases. So from hugging face hub import inference client. And now we're going to start by loading the environment. So by loading the token, and then we're going to say, um, HF token is equal to OS get environment hf token and then endpoint url is equal to uh, this here 
So copy that again, put it into a string. That is our endpoint. All right, and now all we need to do is we need to create an inference client. So I'm gonna say here, client is equal to inference client. We pass here the endpoint and we pass the token. So the token is equal to HF token. And then we just have to prepare a message. So the message could be, or actually messages, a list of uh, messages. And we're gonna start with a simple user message. So the user is gonna say, Mm, how, or let's ask a question, what is uh, machine learning? Question mark. And then in order to get a response, all we have to do is we have to say response is equal to client chat dot completions create. Actually, I'm not even sure. Are we going to use, I don't even think we use OpenAI. Sorry, this was an artifact of my previous attempts. I don't think that we need chat open AI. We don't need that. You don't have to install that. Uh, we can just use, uh, do we need that? I don't think that. So we need actually endpoint URL, not endpoint. There you go. So we don't need open AI lang chain. We're just going to use hugging face inference client and we can still use it uh, like the open AI API. This was a mistake. We don't need that. Uh, so response is equal to client chat completions create. And here we just use the usual syntax model is equal to at this point, I don't really think it matters. We can just type model. I think this is ignored for the most part. It just uses the model that we have deployed. Uh, messages is equal to messages. Uh, and then temperature is something like, let's say 0 0.3. This is a recommended value oftentimes. And then max tokens, let's say is 1024. And then I can say here that I want to print the response choices, zero message content. So that should work. Let's close this and let's do UV run main.py or just Python main.py if you didn't use UV. And in this case, what happens now is hopefully it sends a request to our model and it gets a response. Maybe it's generating right now. We can also see what is happening in the logs, maybe. There you go. We get a long answer. I'm not sure if it's already locked, doesn't look like this. But we get a, there you go, inference time, 13 seconds. This is what happened just now. This is the logging message here. And I got the answer, as you can see. And now we can also do that with structured output. And we don't need lang chain for this, very important. All right, so let's go into the main file. Let's import Pydantic. So let's say from Pydantic import base model. You can also import field if you want to specify something. And now let's do something very, very simple. Class person inherits from base model. For those of you who don't know what structured output is and why it's important, is basically it's basically forcing the model to um, to output the response or to give you the response in JSON format following a certain schema. So for example, person has a name, string and age, int, and maybe a job, uh, also string. And maybe you can also incorporate some enums here if you want to. Uh, I do have multiple videos on structured output, so I'm not going to explain it here in too much detail. But the basic idea is I have this pydantic schema and I can just pass it here as a JSON model to be followed. How do I do that? First of all, I instruct a model to uh, get some information. Mike is 30 years old and works as a programmer. So all the information is here, fill the data model. Very, very simple in this case. And all I have to do now here is I have to say that the schema is the schema of this person class. So person schema is equal to person dot model JSON schema. And then I can just say here, response format is equal to, uh, actually I can pass the schema, I think. Otherwise we can create an instance and just get modeled up JSON. And that is now what we expect here. And as a result, we're gonna get a JSON string. So JSON str is equal to that here. And then we're gonna just parse it. We're gonna say response or not response, let's say instance is equal to person dot model validate JSON. And we're going to base this on the JSON string. And then we're going to print the instance. 
So of course, that is not always going to be the case. It's not like OpenAI or Gemini structured output where you get a guaranteed structured output. So let's do UV run main.py and see if we get it. Person schema doesn't work because I forgot a comma. There you go, run main py. Okay, so we have another problem here, which is we cannot just pass the person schema as response format, we need to pass a dictionary where we also specify that the type of the response format is JSON. So in this case, what we need to do is we need to pass this dictionary and the person schema is going to be the value. So value is going to point to person schema, but before that, type is going to point to JSON. So I think this differs from model to model, it's going to be a different parameter or a different syntax or a different structure. Uh, in the case of Phi 3 mini 120k instruct, uh, it's going to be like this. So type JSON value person schema and person schema is model JSON schema. All right, so UV run main.py and then we should get there you go, name Mike H30 job programmer. This is a pydantic instance. I think we can also print the result in between. So we can print here the JSON string and see what it shows. And we're going to see probably that it's a proper JSON object. So yeah, this is the simplest way. And what you can do now, of course, is you can pause it, you can scale to zero. In this case, now I'm going to pause. And uh, after looking at the cost and seeing that you spend 31 cents, in this case, you can go to settings, you can say delete endpoint, you can just copy this here, and then delete the endpoint, no more cost is going to uh, come at you. So that is super simple, pick a model, pick a GPU, uh, calculate the pricing, it's predictable, it's per hour, you can scale it down, you can scale it up, you can uh, set warnings, you can set thresholds, super, super simple, it's the most basic way to deploy open source models. So that's it for today's video, I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something, if so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below, and of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thanks much for watching, see you in the next video, and bye.